Hey boy, BBL Drizzy, I got a question. I saw you posted you got more money than Ricky Rose. And let's assume you did. Well, your best friend, Birdman, his house went into foreclosure five years ago. You done watch that man struggle them five years and ain't get that man a mansion. Because if you got more money than Rose, what's another 50 million, white boy? White boy, it's one for 40 on Indian Creek. It's one for 50 on Star Island. You got 48 hours, white boy. If you got Ricky Rose money, ain't none of my niggas winning foreclosure. Come on, white boy. Come on, man. What happened to that? 48 hours, the countdown has begun. And that old ass jet you got, they gave it to you free. That's a 1978. Be safe on that, Drizzy. So guys, recently Rick Ross and his crew got jumped in Canada by the Ovi Ho goons. And they got jumped because while they were doing a show there, they played Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar. And in case you really didn't know, Not Like Us is the summer anthem basically crapping on Dre calling him a PDF file amongst many other insane allegations that have thrown a lot of stain on his legacy. And it's interesting because I'm actually in Montreal and Rick Ross was supposed to do a show in Montreal in the middle of June and he ended up canceling it saying that he was sick, but on the same night, he was doing a show in Nashville. So many people thought that he was scared to come to Montreal because Montreal's in Canada. And as Drake would say, he's scared of the six, but not just the six. Apparently, he was scared of the entirety of Canada. And rightfully so, because when he thought he could come to Canada and think it's a game to troll Drake, many people at his show in Vancouver got upset and actually started to fight Rick Ross's crew. Now, Rick Ross got out unscathed. He posted a story on his jet very shortly after, showing that he was untouched in this entire fight but his crew members did get a decent beating and it probably wasn't a fun day for rick ross and the mmg roster and on the hard part six drake actually raps that his montreal connect stand up not fall down so i guess when rick ross avoided that montreal show it was for good reason because he just wasn't trying to mess with the connects that drake got out here but it's funny because, you know, 10 years ago when Drake was first coming into the game, actually more like 15 years ago, he used to always say in interviews that, you know, Lil Wayne, his mentor, taught him not to act tough and that he was just some Jewish kid from the suburbs and he wasn't affiliated with any gangs and show that's not what he should represent in his persona and his music. And he didn't for the first few years in the industry. He definitely portrayed that softer image. And I actually knew some guys who went to high school with Drake back in Toronto in Forest Hill, and they said the same thing. He was not this tough guy that he now portrays himself to be. But listen, that could just be their bias. It's obvious that at this point, people are willing to ride or die for Drake no matter what. But it's more so interesting to see how Drake actually reacts whenever he's in a beef with a different artist. Back when he was battling Pusha T in 2018 and Pusha T revealed to the world that Drake was hiding a kid, Drake made it very difficult for Pusha T to come back to Canada. I believe Pusha T even said in a Drink Tramps interview that he is not welcome back here. He cannot come back to Canada. And when he tried, Drake actually bought out the entire first row at Pusha T's concert just to troll him. And there was this funny video of Pusha T performing at a show and Wale came running out on the stage and Pusha T was just terrified thinking that this might have been one of Drake's goons coming on the stage to attack him. And there's several other stories of people that don't get along with Drake actually ending up in altercations with him. One of his former collaborators, this artist by the name of Detail, actually got beat up by Drake's crew due to some conflicts that they had within music. Same thing with Drum. Drum made the song Cha Cha and Hotline Bling by Drake is a direct interpolation of the song. And when Dram simply asked for his credits... For that song, Drake's crew actually ended up beating up Dram. And there was the issue with Joe Budden, where Joe Budden sent some disses at Drake. And then a bunch of Drake fans ended up at Joe Budden's house and started throwing rocks at his car. And Joe Budden chased him down the street. And it seems like Drake likes this and definitely antagonizes it and brings it on. Like, when the videos were posted of Rick Ross's crew fighting people back in Canada, Drake liked all those posts. He also seems to still be antagonizing Kendrick as he was bowling the other day. And his name on the bowling game was 69God. He also posted online talking about how Spotify never congratulated him for hitting 100 billion streams on their platform and that they're artificially pushing the song Not Like Us. Now, Drake's obviously in a weird position at this point. Like, he's been releasing a lot of pop music since this whole Kendrick beef. He released two songs with Camila Cabello. He also released a song with Sexy Red and a parody to the song Hey There Delilah called Wagwan Delilah. And it seems like all of these songs are kind of indirect responses to Kendrick's disses, right? Kendrick called Drake a pop star. He goes and does songs with Camila Cabello, who is a very known pop star. He also called Drake out for doing songs with Sexy Red, saying that, you know, women like her are his real competition. And then he goes on to remix the song BBL Drizzy with Sexy Red. 
Kendrick also called Drake a colonizer, saying that he doesn't have his own true identity, and he goes and makes a Toronto remix, which was basically a troll song. So really, I mean, with all these posts that he's liking, with all the songs that he's dropping, and calling himself 69 God while he's bowling, it seems like he's trying to poke fun at this entire situation. But the bigger problem and question we have to ask ourselves is, is beefing with Drake dangerous from a safety perspective? Like, can these rappers not come into Canada now without feeling some sort of threat by Drake? If they're beefing with him, we haven't seen Pusha T in Canada since 2018. We all know Drake has some sort of connection with the Canadian government because he's been able to let in celebrities who have criminal records into the country when normally they wouldn't be able to. Guys like Lil Wayne or Chris Brown had a lot of trouble coming into Canada, but Drake pulled strings and got them in. Gucci Mane even rapped about this on a song saying, I've got felony, so I can't make it out of Canada. But Drake said he's going to pull some strings, so let me check my calendar. So we all know Drake is connected here, and it seems like there's always a problem for rappers after they start beefing with Drake once they try to enter back into Canada. And Rick Ross has had some problems himself in the past. He was beefing with 50 Cent and Eminem at one point, and a rapper by the name of Trick Trick, who deems Detroit a no-fly zone, unless you check in with him, actually banned Rick Ross from coming to Detroit for a show because he dissed Eminem. He's also had his issues with his former artist Meek Mill, who banned him from one of his birthday parties. And he had a beef with DJ Vlad. After Vlad questioned him in a 2008 interview about being a correctional officer, Rick Ross allegedly beat him up and had to pay $300,000 to Vlad in a lawsuit due to the incident. Now, Rick Ross and Drake's beef was kind of an unexpected one. Like, the two have made some classic music together. Songs like Amon One, Ashton Martin Music, Lord Knows. Like, some of Drake's best hip-hop records come from his collaborations with Rick Ross. And vice versa. Like, Rick Ross's some of his biggest hits come from his songs with Drake. Like, Money in the Grave, I'm on One, and more. Like, there's even a funny video after they started beefing where Rick Ross is performing. And he lets one of Drake's hooks just play for the crowd. And the crowd is singing it word for word, showing that Ross definitely owes a lot of his commercial success to the music that he has with Drake. And we knew the two started beefing when Rick Ross appeared on Future and Metro Boomin's album, We Don't Trust You, on the song Everyday Hustle. Now, that album was riddled with features of artists who were already beefing with Drake, but Rick Ross made no direct mention of Drake on his verse. Instead, Drake actually invited Rick Ross's ex-girlfriend to one of his shows after that album came out. And then the two exchanged a back and forth where Rick Ross said that Drake got liposuction and a nose job. He kept calling him a white boy. And the two went on to have a petty Instagram beef about whose plane is bigger and who's richer. A couple days later, Rick Ross's plane actually experienced a crash and Drake was the first one to like the photos showing the crash. And Rick Ross accused Drake of being responsible for that crash, along with accusing him of having ghostwriters for his song Sicko Mode. Rick Ross actually released an entire diss song aimed at Drake, and Drake sent a couple shots at him saying that he's going to let his plane crash, saying that everyone's singing Drake's part of the Rick Ross records while Rick Ross performs. But their side of the beef seemed very unserious. It didn't seem that deep, especially because they're both very close with DJ Khaled and have a lot of records with DJ Khaled where they're both on them together. Drake also posted a screenshot of a conversation he had with his mom where she asked him if it was true that he had a nose job and he said no, that it was just some guy that he used to make music with who was just going loopy off all the Ozempic pills and was making up lies about him. So their beef, again, it really didn't seem that deep. It seemed like they were kind of just trolling each other. But it's unfortunate to see things get more serious and altercations ensue due to a beef that seemed like at the forefront it was just a big troll. And what does that say for when Kendrick tries to do a tour in Canada? Can he ever perform the song Not Like Us in Canada without something similar happening? I mean, with Rick Ross, it was a very small venue like if you look it literally looked like he was performing for maybe 100 people which is kind of sad this late in his career that he could only get a concert with that many people in canada somewhere where he's very rarely in and it didn't look like he had any security and it looked like he was directly trying to fight the person who was defending drake so i don't think a guy like kendrick lamar would do something like this but we also just saw future and metro boomin cancel their shows in Canada, showing that either when you mess with Drake, your demand in Canada drops, like no one's going to want to see you if you're beefing with Drake, or it's genuinely not safe for them to be here. And that's what's unfortunate because basically half the industry right now is beefing with Drake. Doesn't seem like he is well respected at all by his peers. And he has much bigger fan bases than a lot of these rappers, so it could make it difficult for them to return to Canada to perform. We already very much saw this with Pusha T, and he even came out and said that he's not well welcome back in Canada and has no desire to come here. But it also makes you wonder, is this a good look for Drake? Like if everyone that you're beefing has a problem coming into your country after, does that show that you're well respected here and that in the long run, you're the real winner of this war because of the fact that they are losing out on money and opportunities by beefing with you? 
Or does it show that you're not comfortable enough in the position you're in that you have to taunt and intimidate artists who are trying to enter into the country that you're from simply because of the fact that they have a problem with you? It also makes you wonder, is Drake going to have problems going into somewhere like L.A.? After all the disrespect that he showed Tupac and Kendrick Lamar throughout this beef and seeing that West Coast legends like Dr. Dre are obviously on Kendrick's side throughout this entire thing. Has a place like LA lost that respect for Drake throughout this whole thing? Or, like Drake said, is it true that he gets more love in Kendrick City than Kendrick gets? It's also going to be interesting to see from a music perspective where Drake goes next, right? Because a lot of his career has been spent associating with artists of different sounds and cultures and incorporating that sounds into his music. Like when he linked up with Future initially to drop What a Time to Be Alive, he wasn't making a lot of trap music before then. But after working with Future, it opened up the door for him to collaborate with all of the Atlanta artists like Young Thug, Lil Baby, Migos, 2 Chains, and more. The same thing with Houston. He came in the game through the Prince family, who are very well connected within Houston, and he incorporated a lot of Houston music in his sound and even collaborated with legends like Bun B. But at this point, who is on Drake's side and who can he rely on to elevate his sound? We're hearing that he's also beefing with Travis Scott, so he can't do more collaborations with him if that's true. He's obviously beefing with Kanye West, Kendrick, a lot of Atlanta, The Weeknd, Rick Ross, like a lot of his former collaborators who he's used in the past to elevate his own music through their sound have now turned on him, leaving him with very few people to make music with in the future. There's obviously artists like Central C or Yeet or Sexy Red who are still obviously on his side and willing to collaborate with him. But are those really the collaborations that we want to hear from Drake? Do we want to hear him on more Sexy Red or Yeet songs? A lot of the newer acts as well today aren't making music that stands out enough where if Drake collaborates them, it'll be exciting, right? Like when he was collaborating with Rick Ross and Maybach music back in the early 2010s, that was super exciting because both of them were at the top of their game. And it was interesting to hear Drake incorporate Rick Ross's soulful production into his own music and collaborate with him. It was the same thing with Future. It was very cool to see Drake collaborating with guys like Future or Migos and incorporate that Atlanta trap sound into his own music. YG as well. It was great to see Drake on some West Coast beats back in the day when he was rapping with guys like The Game or YG. The Weeknd too when they would team up for those moody, darker R&B bangers. But who can he do that with now? A guy like Yeet doesn't have that artistical quality where if Drake collaborates with him, they can make something on the level of a What a Time to Be Alive or an I'm On One or Lord Knows or a Crew Love. Like a lot of these newer acts aren't as exciting as the older artists that Drake used to collaborate with. So Who is Drake left with to team up with to elevate his sound and incorporate their sounds into his music so that he could have something exciting and new to present to the world? I always said, at this point, Drake's next best move would be to just team up with 40, give us an album with no features where it's straight rapping and R&B, stick to your roots, stick to what we love you for, and make music that shows some sort of maturity in your sound and show that you don't have to rely on the rest of the game to still drop hits consistently. But again, beefing with guys like this puts Drake and puts them in an interesting position because they're obviously not safe to come to Canada and perform or they're not welcome. And Drake is obviously not welcome to collaborate with a lot of the guys that helped elevate his sound early on in his career. So where do you think both of them go from here? Do you think Rick Ross will never be able to do a show in Canada? And do you think Drake will not have a artist on the level of a Rick Ross or of a future to be able to collaborate with in the future? Let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one.